just look at this place. Hi, I'm Rock and I'm a tour guide. And this is Dubrovnik, Croatia, one of the most beautiful and best preserved medieval cities in Europe. This place is so amazing that it was used as a filming location on many occasions, including the latest Robin Hood, Star Wars and Game of Thrones. Mighty Dubrovnik walls have never been breached and they have been successfully protecting the city since the 9th century. In this Dubrovnik travel video we will explore Dubrovnik and its must-see places. But first, please smash the like button to help out this video and then enjoy in top 10 Dubrovnik attractions. This is the best place to start exploring Dubrovnik. From the top of Search Mountain you will get the widest and most epic views of Dubrovnik, Adriatic Sea and its surrounding islands. This mountain that's rising right behind the old town is such a good spot that the French army decided to build a fortress here. The fort was finished for Napoleon's birthday August 15, 1812. Today, in the fort, you will find this interesting museum about the Croatian War of Independence from the 1990s that's focused on Dubrovnik and how the city managed to cope with the war. Next to the fort, you will find this big communication tower, but more importantly, here you will also find a cable car, nice restaurant with panoramic terrace, souvenir shop, and here is also this big marble white cross. To get to the top of the mountain, the best way is to use cable car. It starts right outside Dubrovnik walls and the ride takes only 4 minutes. The cable car runs from 9 am to about midnight. You can also reach top of the mountain by car on a narrow road or you can try the adventurous way hiking trail. Dubrovnik Games of Thrones tour is a must for the fans of the series. Dubrovnik was the main filming location for King's Landing, a fictional city in the series. This beautiful Jesuit staircase made in Baroque style was part of the most iconic scene in season 5, Walk of Shame. Of course, there are many other famous Game of Thrones locations like Dubrovnik walls, gates, palaces, towers, fortresses, streets, bridges. So the best way to experience it all is by attending one of the tours. There is also a Game of Thrones cruise, a museum and even Game of Thrones escape room. This is the southern part of mighty Dubrovnik walls that have never been conquered by any army. But this part of the wall has two little secrets. And this is one of them. Small hole in the wall, almost a secret passageway that leads on the other side. And there is something really cool, I want to show it to you. These are cliffs of Dubrovnik and on the cliffs, right under the mighty southern wall is this tightly packed bar. As I mentioned, there are two holes in the wall and the second one leads to similar looking bar, but this one is more extreme as it is on higher cliffs. From time to time some really brave people jump off these high cliffs into crystal clear sea. The name of this bar is known by tourists as Buza but in local dialect it is called Buja and it actually means a hole in the wall. 
And that explains a lot. Venice was the biggest rival of Dubrovnik. In 11th century, the Venetians had a secret plan to build this port that would give them control over Dubrovnik. But the secret got out and the people of Dubrovnik beat the Venetians. They were the ones that built this port upon a 37 meter high sheer rock overlooking the sea in just three months. Since this detached fortress was of prime importance for the defense against attacks from land and sea, it was designed with a fail-safe mechanism. The walls exposed to the sea and to the possible enemy fire are almost 12 meters or 40 feet thick, but this large wall surface is facing the city and it does not exceed 60 centimeters or only 2 feet. In case of the rebellion of the commander of this fortress, the thin wall could never hold against the firepower of the mighty Dubrovnik city walls. In addition, the commander of this fort has always been elected from the ranks of nobility and replaced each month. Nowadays, the three terraces from this fortress are used as a unique stage for Dubrovnik summer festival. According to the legend, Richard Lionheart was returning from Crusades in 1192 when he was shipwrecked in a storm and cast aground on Lockrum Island in front of Dubrovnik town. In order to thank God for his life, he promised to build great church on the spot where his life was saved. When he had laid up his intentions to the Dubrovnik leaders, they convinced him that it would be a much better idea to build a church inside the city walls. But that cathedral was destroyed in earthquake of 1667 and was replaced by this Baroque cathedral from 1700s. Besides its beautiful marble altars and paintings, the cathedral attracts visitors with its treasury. It contains an impressive collection, but its most important objects are the gold-plated arm, leg, and skull of St. Blas, patron saint of Dubrovnik. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19 restrictions, the treasury is not open at the moment. This massive church wall on the main street is part of a large monastery complex from 1300s. Besides this church, the monastery complex also includes a library, small museum and one of the oldest pharmacies in the world. Like most buildings in Dubrovnik, this church was also destroyed by earthquake in 1667. One of the rare pieces that managed to survive is the portal that can be found on the entrance to the church and a marble pulpit inside the church. Otherwise, the inside of the church was rebuilt in Baroque style. On this massive church wall, you can also find this quirky looking ancient stone protruding from the wall. It has a carved face and apparently it's granting wishes. As you can see, it's very slippery. And the reason for that is the legend that says that whoever can climb on this stone and take off his shirt and then put it back on while balancing on the stone, his wish will be granted. Inside the monastery is this cloister, a beautiful covered walkway with arches, semicircular vaults and frescoes. Friars Minor established this pharmacy in 1317 for the needs of monks as well as the public. This is considered to be the third oldest pharmacy in the world. Since then, until today, it's bringing a steady income to the monastery. 
The modern day pharmacy is running in a different room, but still within the monastery walls. This beautiful palace from 1400s was the seat of the head of Dubrovnik state called Rector. This lavish building was sort of a very desirable prison. Rector's term in the office was only for one month and during his term he was not allowed to leave this palace except on an official business. This palace was also the seat of the council and state administration. It also housed an armory, a powder magazine and a prison. This building was damaged by fires, gunpowder explosion, earthquakes and because of its turbulent history it's a beautiful mixture of different styles. Today in Rector's Palace you'll find museums where halls have styled furniture, numerous portraits and paintings, coats of arms and the original keys of the city gates. This is where the main street extends into this beautiful L-shaped square surrounded by the most important buildings in Dubrovnik and this bell tower, the most iconic landmark of Dubrovnik. The original bell tower was built in 1400s, but after devastating earthquake in 1667, the tower started to lean. In 1929, it was leaning so much that it had to be demolished and rebuilt. On the top of the tower, you will see a big bell with two human figurines, famously called the Green Man and they strike the bell every hour. In the middle is a big round dial that shows hours only. Under it is a brass sphere that shows phases of the moon and the bottom part of the clock is sort of an old school digital clock. In western numerals is showing minutes but only in five minute intervals. The square is also dominated by this beautiful baroque church dedicated to the patron saint of the city. In front of the church is the famous stone column with a carved knight named Orlando from 1400s. Unfortunately, at the moment Orlando is under reconstruction, but according to the legend, in 9th century Dubrovnik was surrounded by the Saracen fleet for 15 months. Things were not looking good, but then brave knight Orlando showed up and he defeated the Saracens and saved the city. The quirky fact is that Orlando's forearm was used as the official measurement for fabric. Here the merchants were measuring, cutting and selling fabric. Another interesting statue in the square is dedicated to a writer Marin Držić from 1500s. He was known as Dubrovnik Shakespeare but had a very strange nose. Rubbing his nose brings good luck and it's a sign that someday you will return to Dubrovnik. This is the heart and soul of Dubrovnik. This is its main street that runs through the entire length of Old Town. On the western side it is connecting Pila Gate with the eastern side Ploče Gate. This street is about 300 meters or 1000 feet long and it divides the city on its northern and southern part. You see, this street used to be a sea canal that divided the small island on this side from the mainland on that side. On the small island there was a settlement called Ragusium built by Roman refugees, while on the mainland there was a second settlement built by Slavic people of Croatians. The two settlements eventually merged into one town and in 11th century sea canal was filled and this main street was created. 
in 1400s, this main street was paved with limestone pavement and it has been polished to perfection by countless feet ever since. If you enter Dubrovnik from Pilagate, Stradun starts with this amazing big Onofria fountain. It was built in 1400s and it represents the end of a complex aqueduct system that was almost 12 kilometers or 7.3 miles long and brought water to Dubrovnik. Each of the 16 sides has a unique stone carved mask face with a faucet from the mouth. Current appearance of Stradun was created after devastating earthquake and fire in 1667 when most of the buildings in the city were destroyed. Former different palaces, buildings with different styles and heights were replaced by planned and unified construction. All buildings were built in Baroque style, they all have similar heights, similar fronts and even similar internal arrangements. This unified look is one of Dubrovnik's landmarks and one of its attractions. Dubrovnik city walls are the most important landmark of the city. White stone mighty walls are the main reason why Dubrovnik is known as the Pearl of Adriatic. These walls were never breached by a hostile army and are part of UNESCO World Heritage Sites. They are considered to be the finest defensive walls in the world. Most of the existing walls were built during the 14th and 15th century. The walls are almost 2 kilometers or 1.2 miles long and they reach the maximum height of about 25 meters or 82 feet. The walls were reinforced by forts and towers and the city gates are still the only way in and out of the old town. Above the city gates you will always find a statue of Saint Blaise, the patron saint of Dubrovnik. Walking Dubrovnik walls is one of the best things you can do. There are three entrances to the walls. One near Pila Gate, another one near Ploche Gate and one more at the Maritime Museum. From the top of the walls you will get amazing views over the Old Town and Adriatic Sea. Around Tower Mincheta is the highest point in the wall system and the symbol of unconquerable city of Dubrovnik. But don't underestimate the walk and get prepared. Bring good walking shoes, good sun protection and a lot of water. Dubrovnik is like a time capsule, a living and breathing monument where people live and work. On top it also has crystal clear sea with beautiful islands and great beaches. It's no wonder that Dubrovnik is among top must-see places in the world. If you like this video give us thumbs up. Do you have any questions about Dubrovnik? Please leave them in the comment section below and I'll answer it. Also share with us your experience and your ideas about Dubrovnik. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. This way you'll be notified every time I post a new travel video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.